further delay, I'll have herself um, and give a brief summary of her background. Hi, uh, my name is Katie. Uh, like Summer said, I just graduated from the class of 23 at Devlin High School. I am a longtime friend of Summer and Anthony, so I first want to thank them for inviting me today. Uh, they run a great organization, and I'm really proud to be speaking here today. So first of all, I applied to Stanford in the early round this year, um, around December of last, of last year, and I was, or I think around October, and then I was admitted in December. So that was a really cool journey that I went through last year, and I also applied to a lot of UC schools. But other than that, um, that was all I did for last year's admission cycle. Um, I'm going to be majoring in computer science next year at Stanford, although when I did apply to Stanford, they did not ask for a major, so I did apply um, without committing to a major. So throughout high school, I did a lot of activities relating to government and education, as well as a little bit of engineering there and there, and also I participated in the biomedical academy at Dublin High. So my high school experience was not very focused in one specific field, but rather I was able to take my time and explore different things um, while focusing on a subject that I really um, had interest in, which was government, and still was able to get into a great college um, without having to focus really hard in on one thing. So basically throughout this webinar, I want to answer some of the questions that were submitted throughout um, the time before this webinar, and I'll go through each one. There's about 10, and then afterward, we can go through a short uh, Q&A section. So is there anything that Summer Anthony wants to mention before I get started? Guess not. Okay. Um, feel free to uh, enter questions in the chat. I can answer them whenever and get to them when I'm done with my question. And also, if everyone could ex- like say what grade they're in, uh, so I can get a good chance of or a good a good uh, idea of what um, audience I'm speaking to, because the the process and the advice changes very much with each grade that you're in. So if you're a parent, I would really appreciate if I could know uh, what grade your student is in, so I can cater my advice better. All right, so the first question I want to go through that was entered in the chat was, how did you prepare in middle school for a good university admission in the future? Um, For this one, I want to say that in middle school, I wasn't super focused on, um, you know, college because back in middle school, I was kind of just um, focused on getting good grades and practicing and preparing for high school. I remember before eighth grade, I didn't really have a good idea of how good each college was or um, what college really meant for my future. I just kind of knew that I was going to go to a college and I wanted to go to a good one. But in eighth grade, I think what really set me on the path to success was taking a class called competitive debate. I went to Fallon and that class uh, very, very much prepared me for a future in which I hung around a lot of very academically focused students and also was able to see myself as someone who could achieve in a competitive event. Uh, In middle school, I really didn't do much enrichment. I didn't do any math competitions. I didn't um, do any tutoring. I really just kind of focused on my classes and did a lot of hobbies. I remember in middle school, I was very into art and I kind of just did that for fun. I didn't really go to any classes or anything. And I wasn't actively competing in anything other than debate. But I think debate was the first thing that showed me that I could be good at a competitive event and that I really enjoyed the process of writing and team building and stuff like that. So I'd say in middle school, I would find some hobby or some activity or competitive activity that you genuinely enjoy and want to do so that you can kind of inspire confidence in yourself that you're a capable student who's able able to achieve and if you sort of establish that the feeling of achieve like achieving in middle school is really nice then I think that'll help you motivate yourself for the future and if you're a parent I would say that in middle school um, it's really about a time of like exploration and it's not really a big deal if you don't achieve anything big in middle school because Honestly, nothing in middle school will ever go, sorry, will ever go into your college application. So um, starting in middle school is just more about getting to know yourself and what you're interested in and doing a lot of trial and error around that. Um, Great. Uh, thank you, Katie. Yeah. Now, like moving on to the next question, right? Like kind of building upon that last question. So like what extracurricular activities did you continue from middle school onto high school and like which ones do you think were the most important to your college admission and overall your de- character development? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said, uh, debate was something that I ended up continuing for about five years. I first started in eighth grade, which was um, later than a lot of other people. A lot of other people started in seventh grade. And that's where I met Summer and Anthony. But I ended up continuing debate until my senior year and ended up joining the club in high school. And I think it was one of my more um, upfront, upfront activities, especially in the beginning of high school. But towards the end of high school, I shifted away from debate and took sort of less of a front seat in competing especially that aspect other than that um I'm going to be honest I didn't really do much in middle school so every other activity I did start in high school starting in ninth grade okay and yeah Anthony feel free to just ask me the questions that were yeah. uh, thank you so before. I know how you said that there were no majors that you applied to in Stanford but like how did you narrow it down between what you really wanted to pursue in college and like it's a big decision for a lot of people. And I know like quite a few people are struggling with it. So is there like a process you went down to actually make that decision? Yeah, totally. I think I'm a person who has like a lot of interests. Like I said, I originally was in the Biomed Academy in Dublin High School. So I would have like a bit of like medical interest. I definitely considered pursuing like a medical path and being a doctor. I also heavily considered being a lawyer or going into business, especially after doing debate. So I think I had a lot of options on my hands that I definitely was considering. And I was confused for a very, very long time on what major I wanted to do in college. Throughout high school, I would constantly change my my like my goal of like what career I was trying to, trying to pursue. So I think even when I sat down to do my applications, I honestly had like a big like inner conflict on what I actually wanted to apply for. And I don't think that was a good thing. I think if I was able to decide earlier what I wanted to do, that would have been great. But at the same time, it's like not the end of the world if you don't know. Like for me personally, I honestly just thought of like my future possibly like possible job prospects or what could you know set me up best for the future and I had like a long conversation with my parents especially my dad and we kind of sat down and decided that applying computer science to the majority of the schools that I would be doing would be a good plan but I will say um, applying computer science is literally the hardest thing you can do for college and I know that a lot of my friends who did apply computer science for a lot of colleges did end up with a lot worse results than people who apply with other majors. Uh, for example, I applied computer science for the majority of the UC schools and my UC admissions weren't as good as the admissions for other colleges. I think for Stanford, I did not apply as CS because they didn't make me choose a major. So instead, my application looked very much as a government and leadership oriented application and they ended up liking that. So I think um, when you're choosing your major, you definitely have to consider that a more competitive major is going to affect your results on how prestigious of a school you're going to go to. But when I made my decision to apply as computer science, I went in knowing that it would harm my results. But at the same time, I knew that it, getting a computer science degree is, you know, was the utmost priority for me. And I think no matter what school you go to, if you major in computer science, you will end up like fine, as well as other different majors that are very competitive. So I think I let go of obsession with like having a really prestigious school in order to make that decision and I think I don't regret it in any way I think even if uh, I did not get into Stanford there were, I had many other great options to choose from even as like a computer science major so I think when you sat, didn't sit down and decide your major you want to be picking something that your application makes sense with as in like what your activities have been leading up to in high school as well as um, what you want to be satisfied with when you're done with college in like four years later so I think it's, it's a long conversation that's a very personalized one. It's hard to give generalized advice for what major you want to go to. But as someone who had that long conflict in my mind on what to choose, I would love to help anyone who has that same conflict. And especially since it's a personal conversation, you can totally reach out to me and we can discuss that. So just to reword it. So don't apply to a major that you're not interested in just to get into college, right? Mm -hmm. Totally. Yes. Do not do that. Because then a lot of colleges have extremely hard transferring like systems because a lot of colleges separate their engineering department from their general department or from their English department. And so if you apply to something that you don't want to be, a lot of the time it's extremely difficult to make it into that major once you get in. But if you apply to a college like Stanford or a lot of private universities, a lot of them allow you to declare whatever major you want. Like for Stanford, you're allowed, you're allowed to declare whatever major you want. So you really have to look into Googling your college and figuring out like what procedures they have. I honestly looked a lot at Reddit and a lot of forums to see um, what their procedures were for every, every college and how hard it is to get into the major you want, 
even after you get into the college. Okay, thank you. So now moving on to a slight tangent now, uh, going on to high school and what you actually did in like some other more specifics about what you did in high school. I was just wondering, like, how many AP courses did you take throughout the entirety of high school? And like, how many of that was before senior year and how many of that was during your first three years? Of course, yeah. Um, I took about 10 AP courses throughout high school. And honestly, my course load wasn't like the hardest you could do. I know a lot of other students had a lot harder course loads than me, but I was sure to maximize the amount of weighted courses I could get. I'd say I avoided taking like the super like notoriously hard AP classes. I stuck to the sort of middling like AP courses that were known to be like not too hard, but also still educational and still displayed rigor. Um, I only took one AP in sophomore year, but then junior and senior year, I went, I shifted towards like mainly AP schedules. I remember I didn't take any unweighted courses between junior and senior year. So I remember junior year, I had like half honors and then half AP and then senior year, I had, I think an all AP schedule. So I remember it never was too hard for me because I didn't take like a lot of the super killer classes, like AP physics per se. Like I honestly just avoided physics throughout all of high school. Um, they didn't make it a requirement at Dublin High for my class. So I essentially just never took physics, but instead I took things like AP bio, um, I took AP Calc, AB and BC. Um, but yeah, I made sure to take a lot of the very hard classes, but not the super, super hard classes that are going to bring down my GPA because I honestly prioritized getting A's in the classes that I had instead of taking a harder class and risking get, like, getting a worse grade. Because I think um, it's always going to look better to colleges if you get an A rather than if you took a harder class and got a worse grade. So like building upon that, do you, like some parents have approached me about taking a lot of AP classes, but all the easy ones. Do you recommend students to try to load up on all the easy AP courses or do you recommend them to kind of pursue what they're actually interested in? You should definitely pursue what you're interested in because a class will be more interesting if you uh, are actually interested in it. I'd find that um, a push, for example, like AP US history, I took that in my junior year. It is like a pretty hard course. And like, I think, Although it was a hard course, it was one of the easiest for me because I found myself very interested in U.S. history. So a course can be notoriously hard, but if you're into the subject, it'll be easier to stay motivated because I think the issue isn't really with like how hard the class is. It is really just how, with how motivated you are, because when it gets to, you know, finals week and you're burnt out and you're tired and you're come back, you're coming back from like a really long day, you want to kind of have that interest to still do your homework and still do it well to, in order to get a good grade in the class. because if you're at the core of it, just disinterested with the content, for example, like AP Euro, I really hated that class. I ended up like getting a worse score on the AP exam because I genuinely was not excited to do my work in that class. I wasn't looking forward to the lectures. I wouldn't, wasn't, wasn't paying attention like as much as I could. So I think it's just like of the utmost importance that the AP class that you're taking is something that you actually want to do. And it's, just, it's honestly easier to do classes that are easier like are easier to be excited for classes that are easier. So I would lean towards taking the easier ones because they do help you maintain a good GPA without like risking you um, falling behind in your GPA in terms of like taking a super hard class and getting like a worse grade in it. But I do encourage you to um, not like take too much of the easy route because colleges do know which courses are less rigorous and generally like they can tell compared to your peers when you're taking the easy route. But then again, it's a very personalized discussion on what you're interested in versus what um, is generally regarded to be easy. So you mentioned how you came home after like a really long day. So like, did you do any sports in high school? And like, how much weight do you think those sports had in your college admission process? Of course. Um, honestly, I did a year of JV lacrosse in my junior year. And that was not a good decision, um, especially since I think for sports, if you have a good story to tell out of it, as in you're dedicated enough to it throughout the years in order to tell a good story of it in your essays, I'd say that like without that aspect of being really into the sport and having it, I mean, having it have a lot of meaning in your life, I would say just don't bother with it because sports is like one of the biggest commitments you can make in high school. A lot of my other activities did not even add up to the amount of time I spent on lacrosse that spring. It was literally just one semester for me, but I ended up having to do practices every single day. And that wasn't something I was used to. Um, I never really did sports other than like basketball in middle school. So I wasn't really prepared for the amount of time I'd have to commit to it. It also takes away a lot of physical energy from me. So 
when I came back from practice, I did not have the energy to do a lot of my work. And that ended up being the semester in high school that I got the worst grades in. Um, before that, I was maintaining like a 4.0 unweighted GPA, but that was the semester in which I actually fell behind. So I would say that if a sport isn't one of your main activities that has a lot of meaning to you and that you could tell a good story from, I would not do it. Um, mainly just because lacrosse just became sort of a chore for me, especially since I was on JV. So I really don't think making that decision to um, do that sport was like a, was a good strategic decision in terms of college applications. So like for the parents who might not know about the commitment of high school sports, can you give like a rough guesstimate about how many hours each week you spent on purely just JV uh, lacrosse? Yeah, totally. Um, I had to spend as much time as like a varsity student would. So I think if you're going to do a sport, I would try and aim for varsity. But I ended up having to do like about one and a half hours of practice every single day. So every single day after school, I'd go to practice and then we'd have games, um, I think like twice a week, which was like a good two to three hours in total, including transportation and getting there before the game and all that. So um, it really did kind of put a toll on me. But at the same time, I was I would say I wasn't really enjoying it that much. So just it's like as a personal experience, I wouldn't recommend doing it just because it's going to take a huge toll on, you know, the rest of your classes and the amount of burnout you're going to be getting from it. But if it's a sport that makes you feel energized and you have a great team and you love hanging out with your team and um, committing to that sport, like I think it'll create a great story and narrative for you to use for your college app. So it really just depends on um, how committed you are. But if you're not going to commit all the way, like I didn't commit all the way, I only did one year of it, I would say it's not worth it. Sounds tough to balance. And about that thing of balance is was it hard overall to just balance course load and like outside life during high school? Or do you think it was something that you had to learn slowly as you got, went through high school? Totally. Um, I think in high school, I actually ended up having a lot of fun. I did hang out with my friends a lot in high school because I'm a very social person. So I did find myself um, definitely getting a lot of that social aspect in in high school. I by no means locked myself in my room and did nothing uh, or like did nothing but study. Um, I think a lot of the time in high school, I was focused on getting my work done before ever socializing. And I think I used socializing as like a reward for getting my work done. So I would often um, be very motivated to finish my homework and finish my activities in order to, you know, have some fun in high school. Uh, I think a really key thing was kind of just knowing what kind of best suits my motivation, because I think my motivation was very, very peer oriented because the people I hung around in high school were also very oriented towards the goal of getting into a good college. Like my best friends were all taking the same classes as me. Um, we spoke about our classes a lot. And I think surrounding myself with that um, kind of motivating factor constantly helped me stay focused towards my goals. And it had sort of a friendly competition aspect in terms of um, feeding off of my friends' ideas. And we often plan to um, start clubs together. We plan to start nonprofits together. And I think having that sort of friendship um, really did help me in high school and also helped me have that balance of um, socialization and fun all along with, um, you know, the activities I was doing. So I'd say that you need to definitely make sure that the extracurriculars you're doing are, you know, making you feel like it's not like a chore and that it's part of the fun that is going into your high school experience. Okay. Thank you for that wonderful segment. I'm going to now hand my part over to Summer, who's going to ask some more questions to Katie. And I'll, again, I'll look at those questions that you are sending me in the chat and I'll eventually ask them all at the very end. So hold on tight. I'll get to those questions eventually. Um, so I wanted to go back and talk more about the application and admissions process. Um, so how do you think you stood out during the college admissions process? Because um, everyone says that like, oh, yeah, for essays, you have to present yourself as super unique. But how do you think you like did that? Um, I think that I sort of created a story and a main narrative out of who I was as an applicant. Um, as I started to craft my application in, you know, the summer before, for my senior year, I kind of sat down and thought about the first 18 years of my life and really what was the main, you know, thing that makes me me. And I kind of wove together a lot of the stuff I did in government and leadership because I think that best reflected who I was. And I also thought about my upbringing and how that was special from other people's. And I ended up coming up with the narrative that I was someone who was, you know, very I, I liked to make people compromise, uh, especially since I grew up in a family that was, you know, like 
one side was very democratic and then one side was very republican like you know each parent had their own philosophy and i think that growing up like that with both you know sides of the coin speaking to me at all times i felt like i was very much in the middle ground and able to understand a lot of different opinions. So I tie that into my experience as a student board member. Um, a lot of you may know me as the student board rep at Dublin High. I was serving in that position for three years and I'd say that was like my, you know, my main activity. It was like the greatest thing that kind of made me um, the applicant that I was. And so taking my experience at home uh, as someone who compromised a lot at the family dinner table, I take I took that experience into the boardroom in which I tried to compromise between the board members and sort of get across um, student interests while um, fostering a very like collaborative environment. And so I wrote my final statement, my personal statement, my main essay on how I was compromise oriented while bringing in lots of humor and jokes from home and kind of tying that into the way I like to lead with, you know, humor and with positivity and stuff like that. Um, I think mainly what made me a good applicant was being able to create a point and a story out of the activities that I did. Instead of just having a list of activities and extracurriculars that just didn't really have a story or like an oomph to it, I think I sort of like took all of it and gave like a very human side of it about why I like to do leadership or my style of leadership and kind of how it ties to my identity. So I think overall, you need to have a very good, compelling story that is utmost likable and like makes the admission offer want, want to cheer for you. Because ultimately in the admissions process, you are applying so that your admissions officer can fight for you to be admitted in their conference room because they discuss all the applicants once you're being admitted and they have to be the ones to have a reason to admit you and defend that reason to other admissions officers. So you have to be thinking about how can I become the most likable and the one with a compelling story that makes sense instead of a applicant who doesn't really have a sort of burning, like either like a burning passion or like a burning story that's like very interesting. Um, so I know a lot of people are in the upcoming application cycle. Um, and I guess, how did you brainstorm ideas for your personal statement? And how did you decide to use like, which story where, like, for example, you would have different ones for the UCs and your personal. So how did you decide that? Right. Um, I ended up doing my early application first. Um, I honestly started very late in terms of like trying to figure out what I was going to say. Throughout high school, I kept a notes app file where I wrote down any loose ideas that I kind of got over the years. And so I opened that file and I kind of started there. Um, but I I remember for the UCs, they asked for four essays and they're four rather short essays, except those four things are supposed to represent you know who you are. So I think what I did was that I went through my activities list as in like what I did in high school and thought of the best sort of stories or lessons that I could represent from each one. For example, for debate, I thought, well, I could write a really great essay about how the debate club was a very small inactive club when I started high school. But I remember when I came in in freshman year, I was really like, I was really excited to make it a bigger club. And so I talked about how we grew the club from like a, a club that like sat on the floor of the library to a club that ended up having a very huge um, online network during the pandemic. And then even, you know, coming out of the pandemic, we had a lot of participants, um, a lot more than we had before. And we reestablished, you know, credibility with the school and we ended up being able to go to nationals. And so it's like a good story that I can make out of even just one extra curricular that I did. So that was one of my UC essays. But in my Stanford application, I remember like thinking of, you know, more funny stories or more personal stories. I remember for my essays, I didn't even really write about much academic stuff. I wrote more about things that kind of make me me and like and sort of represent my identity better I remember I wrote an essay about how I like to start meme accounts at every camp that I go to and that essay was really focused on how I like to use humor to lead people and humor to connect people and so that kind of you know went with my theme and I remember another essay was about my car and how learning to drive was like one of the things that made me realize how much responsibility I have in my life and how much agency I have over, you know, the things that I do. So I think really for the UC essays, they want to see more of like your academic side or like what, like what literally you did. Whereas in like a, you know, your personal application, you can write about more like say quirky things that are better for representing, you know, who you are as a person rather than just the achievements that you have. Because 
in your college applications, you do get to just literally describe your achievements. And so you don't want to be repetitive in that way. You kind of want to add more of like a pizzazz to it where you add more human personality to your application through your essays. So when I brainstormed, I wanted to focus on things that you know, were more personal rather than just restating what I did in my activities list. So I really just let myself um, think of like the craziest things I did in high school or like the most meaningful things I did instead of just um, literally what came from my application list. Um, and you mentioned that you like to make memes at every camp you go to. So yeah. could you talk a little bit about the summer camps and programs you did and then a little bit more about what you learned? Yeah, that's actually a really good transition. Um, so I, in high school, I basically did something every summer. I remember I early on, I did a lot of debate camps that helped me, you know, further my debate career. But later on, I did this camp called Girl State. And from Girl State, I learned quite a bit. Uh, I think there I was able to run for like a position. And basically the structure is that they're simulating like American government in a camp. And so I could run for say governor, which was the number one position in the camp because it was like the leader of the whole government. Um, so I ended up running for that position and making it, which was probably one of my biggest achievements. I ended up mentioning that in my personal statement, like my long essay. Um, and so that was like a really great camp. And to get into that camp, you have to apply from your school because each school sends a delegate. And so that was more of like a government orient oriented activity I did. I also did Cosmos in my uh, summer before my senior year. I think a lot of students end up doing Cosmos earlier in high school than I did, but I think it was overall like a really good experience that is amazing for demonstrating that you're into engineering or bio or whatever cluster you apply for. I'd highly recommend it. I think it was a really good experience and something that, you know, I had my brother applied to and everything. So those were, I think, the main two summer camps I went to. Um, other than that, during summers, I I remember I took a Stanford pre-college course, but I honestly don't think it really helped me at all. I don't think I even ended up putting it like on my end application. So I don't think doing pre-college programs really help all that much because colleges don't see them as super hard to get into because oftentimes they're not really hard to get into. But if you're like sort of a freshman or a sophomore, pre-college programs aren't like a bad idea. It's basically just where you take a course from a college and it's often very expensive. So if you're not looking to spend a lot of money, there's a lot of better ways to spend your summer, I'd say. So a lot of camps can be found by looking uh, like on the applications of, or like looking on the internet to see what previous applicants have done. I think a lot of other summer camps can be found by, you know, Googling lists of them. I think a lot of people have compiled a lot of them, but um, on a more personalized note, like there are better camps for each different major or different interest. And I do know a lot of camps that a lot of my peers have done. And um, I guess if anyone has any questions on what they specifically should be doing, I usually have a great answer. But in general, it's hard to say, like, hard to recommend camps. And then I guess, could you talk a little bit about the similarities and differences between summer camp applications and college applications? Yes, um, I would, first of all, I would say that summer camp applications are probably the best thing that I did to prepare for my final college application. Because by the time I ended up doing my final college application, I already kind of knew how to write an essay. I had a few essay ideas that I'd already been um, brainstorming for a long time. So I think summer program applications are super similar to college application. It's like a practice round, if I would have a way to describe it. Oftentimes they're a lot shorter. So they don't take as long to do. Um, I say that they are like essay wise, very, very similar. Like a lot of them ask for letters of recommendation. And when I ended up submitting letters of recommendation for my final college application, I just reused ones from the people I'd asked for summer camps previously. So I think by applying to summer camps, you're giving yourself a really, really, really good practice um, and materials to start with when you start your college app. So I think one of the best things you can do to prepare for your final college app is to do summer program applications because there really isn't much of a difference. It's just that you're doing it earlier. And then it's like a it's like a smaller practice round and it helps you prepare a lot of the things that you would actually be using for your college app. Um, and you also talked about getting letter of recommendations for both summer camps and college apps. So for letter of recommendations, there's often a myth that you need to have one STEM and one humanities teacher for the best chances of acceptance. Um, do you think this is true? And who did you end up asking for your letter of recommendation? Yeah, um, I think 
I did follow that rule. Um, so I can't really say if it really worked or it didn't work. Uh, I ended up having three recommenders for my Stanford application uh, since UCs don't take letters of rec. I, I asked my history teacher from junior year, so my AP teacher who I liked a lot, um, but I heard that her recommendation letters aren't super long. It was Miss Simpson, but I think a lot of people do end up asking her, which does dilute like the meaningfulness of getting a recommendation letter from a teacher. I also asked Mr. Brown, who's the leader of the engineer academy, but I think he left this year. But he did, I think in his letter of rec, he talked about how I competed in like the outside of school engineering competition. Uh, so that was like a, I think that was like an extra thing that made him a special recommender that was like really good. I also asked um, Trustee Rouse, who is no longer a trustee on the school board because she retired from the position, but um, she was probably the board member that I was closest to. And we did a lot of extra projects outside of um, board meetings. I remember we wrote a letter to the State Board of Education. And so she was one of my you know, favorite board members that I thought I had a close bond with. And so she wrote a really, really, really long and really good recommendation letter for me. She wrote a lot of praise in there and she spent a lot of effort in uh, describing the things that I've done. And I think having a recommender who genuinely is like cheering for you and likes you so much that they really actually want you to get into whatever thing that they're asking them to recommend you for is like the best thing because they put so much more effort in than other teachers who kind of just are doing it because you asked them to. So I think the rec letter that made the biggest impact on my application was the one from Trusty Rouse. So I don't think it really mattered whether I had a humanities or STEM teacher. I think it matters way more um, whether the teacher is like genuinely cheering for you or not. And so that's why I think it's really important in sophomore, junior year and kind of senior year to make really close bonds with your teachers and sort of make sure that they do have a very positive opinion of you because you don't want to just um, be asking, like scrambling to ask whatever teacher that you can, um, like when it's time to apply to college, you want to have someone who you genuinely have a close bond with and you've done things that they can talk about in their rec letter. So um, I'd utilize the outside recommender spot because not only do colleges ask for teacher ones, they give you an optional slot to get an extra outside recommender from an extracurricular that you're doing or maybe a coach or like a fellow like adult who works with you. So I think that's honestly the best like opportunity for another adult to vouch for you because teachers have to write like like probably sometimes like hundreds of rec letters like over the years especially. And so they don't put as much like like passion in it especially if you're not like a super outstanding student. So that's why I'd say that the extra recommender slot is the best one that you can go for, for a good rec letter. And how much weight do you think each part of the application has? For example, like stats, essays, and a letter of rec? Um, I'd say that the stats that you have are sort of the bottom line for getting in. I think as I've been told, I, like when the admissions officers are looking at your application, the first thing they do is just to make sure that your grade and your stats are good enough for admission. And so I think that the price of admission is really just like having good grades and ones that are good enough for the college you're applying to. So it depends on the college, their bar will be higher or lower. But once you make it past that initial stage, like they kind of just use, you know, bad grades as a way to eliminate applicants before even reading their essays. So I think the bottom line is that you do really need like good grades and a good stats in order to make it past that first, the first barrier of a college like admission process. Um, and then after that, that's when they actually read your essays and put more time into that. But I heard that a lot of college application readers, they don't really spend more than like maybe even five or 10 minutes looking at your application. And so essays are really, 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 really important for grabbing people's attention. So like your first line of your essay should be very attention grabbing. It should make them want to look like read read further. So I think having interesting essays that are interesting and fun to read are probably one of the best things you can do for yourself as an applicant. So I would put, you know, a lot of effort throughout high school into maintaining good enough grades so that you don't get thrown out in like the first round of college apps, but also you need to keep your attention after you make it past the first round in your essays. And so I'd say that grades and essays are probably the most important thing you can do, except um, with your extracurriculars, you need to be demonstrating something very, very excellent uh, there as well. But I'll elaborate on that later. Um, and then I guess the final question we have for now is, 
Uh, I know with the upcoming college admissions round, everyone is probably really stressed about the entire thing about like writing essays. So do you think hiring an essay counselor or counselor in general is necessary? And do you have any recommendations? Yeah, of course. Um, throughout high school, I'm going to be honest, my parents uh, did not think I needed a like a, a professional college counselor. So we never even looked into professional adult counseling, um, except I will say in high school, I was very, very, very self-motivated in looking into how to get into college. So I spent hours and hours and hours looking at, you know, Reddit, looking at the internet for advice, watching YouTube videos on it. Um, I read so many forums, so many like application essays just on my own time because I was super interested in it. So I say that you do need to have some sort of guidance, whether you get it from the internet and investing a lot of time into that or, you know, paying someone to do it. Although I will say, um, I did get tons and tons of advice from older students who had just finished going through the application process. That was the best advice that I had ever received. I remember going into high school, I sat down with a Yale student or like an incoming Yale student. And he basically just told me everything he did in high school. I also had like a really long conversation with an incoming Harvard student when I was in my freshman year. And I think hearing from them and hearing their journeys that they just went through kind of gave me a lot of inspiration because I kind of looked at what their application was and thought like that I could maybe emulate parts of it. And I took their advice, you know, very seriously. So I think talking to older students is super important, like especially one on one conversations is probably the best that you can do for yourself as a student and or as a parent looking to how motivate your student or get, you know, direct advice because they can tell you um, exactly what a teacher is like from your high school. They can tell you how it is applying from your specific area. They have that first aid experience that I think professional counselors don't really bring. For my essays as well, I did pay one of my older friends to help edit my essays. Um, and I had a lot of you know older students read my essays and edit them. I think that was a, a great experience instead of hiring a professional counselor. So I would look more towards hiring like students or like older students to talk to you um, but yeah, that, I think that would be my greatest recommendation. I think professional counselors do have good benefits though. I'd say that they, from my friend's experience, they kind of kept them on track in completing their application because the professional counselor like, forces you to check in with them like every month or whatever. Whereas me, I didn't have a professional counselor. So I had to keep myself accountable in completing my application. And I ended up procrastinating like so much for the final essay. And so if I had a counselor or, or someone who was constantly checking in with me, that would have made me be more timely in completing the application. But other than that, yeah, I think if I have any recommendations, I know uh, a lot of incoming students are doing like rec uh, counseling services. I personally, I am running counseling services. Uh, I'm running currently uh, a service with my best friend who's going to Princeton from Dublin High School. So if anyone is interested in that, I'd be more than happy to, you know, start talking to you on like a free consultation or anything like that. Um, if you have any small questions for me, I'm also super happy to answer them without charge, obviously. I'd be happy to answer any personal questions if you do reach out to me. Hey, thank you, Katie, for that segment. As Summer just mentioned in the chat, if anyone's interested in Katie's counseling services, we'll send out a flyer along with the video recording so you can reference back anything said in this, uh, in this meeting. Now I'm gonna move on to a quick Q&A session. I received a few questions. And the first one is just the one that goes around. I just, uh, someone asked whether or not everybody's majors in this Zoom meeting right now was. So do you want, uh, I know Katie, you're doing CS and a little bit of public policy. Summer, what is your major? Um, I'm probably gonna pursue journalism. And I am more interested into the business or economic side. Although me, just like uh, just like Katie, I have been doing a lot of debate, so I'm still like relatively undecided. So it's perfectly fine to be undecided about your major until your last year. And when you apply, you probably should select a major but as again, some schools, you don't even need to spe specify one. Now, another question that someone mentioned in the chat was in like in total high school experience, what do you think was the hardest part and what part do you think you could have improved on thinking back in, in hindsight. So, sorry, repeat the first part of the question. Was it the hardest experience? Or... What was the hardest part? And then what do you think you could have done better in hindsight? I think the hardest part was, hmm. I think hardest part was time management. Um, I am someone who does procrastinate a lot when I do a lot of my work. So I think 
creating a good routine for myself and keeping myself like motivated to complete that routine every day was, was like definitely like a big challenge for me because for me I think pursuing opportunities and you know jumping at new extracurriculars and like staying like motivated to do those extracurriculars are like an easy part for me but I think the follow-through is definitely like a hard part of having discipline in high school I think in high school it's very important and very impressive to have like to be very disciplined because a lot of students at our young age are not super disciplined in, you know, keeping, you know, work like going. So I think a huge part of, you know, a huge challenge in high school was learning to have that sort of discipline and like that yong gong attitude. So I think that was the hardest part. I think going back, if I were to change anything, it would be, um, I think it would definitely be deciding what I want to do earlier and going really hard on that because I think a lot of high school was spent like deliberating like oh what major should I do I am too afraid to commit to a major in case I change my mind so I think if I was able to know what I wanted to apply as and just commit to it earlier on like for example in my sophomore year if I just committed to wanting to do government uh, or apply as a government major I think that would have helped me a lot because I would have been able to um, just focus in on getting like a congressional internship, focus in on getting like, you know, a nonprofit going that I was really interested in, I would have been able to commit really early on and getting those things developed by the time I made it to senior year. I ended up getting a lot of great achievements in the government field, except I think I would have been able to go even further if I had had a great idea of what I wanted to apply as earlier on. But then again, it did work out for me in the end. So it's not a huge deal if you don't have like something you're going to commit to. But I think committing to something, even if you aren't going to you know, end up majoring for it is still a good idea just so you can develop and climb the ladder per se in that specific field you're going for because there's like the local level there's the county level and then state then national level for achievements and I think you would want to get to that national level as soon as possible if you want to create extra cookies that really really stand out and so in order to start climbing the ladder you need to pick a ladder and so I think I wish I picked a ladder sooner. Sounds good. Uh, the next question we got is that, do you think sports achievement will play a role into getting into any college or your role into getting into Stanford? So I know you mentioned earlier that it's a big commitment, but for those who are really committed, do you think it helps or do you think it's kind of like a balance as well? Right. I've heard a lot of my peers get into college for a sport through like the recruiting process. So I think if sports is like something you're super good at and something you're good enough to get recruited as, I would definitely go for it because it's a great way to get into college without um, having like all the other necessary applicant, like, you know, like aspects. I think if you're super good at a sport, I would definitely commit to it and try to get recruited because that will get you very far in the college admissions process. However, if you're kind of okay at the sport or like good, but not good enough to get recruited, I don't know if I would commit all I have into that sport because it's going to end up just being another um, part of your application that maybe you could tell a good story about, but it's not going to ultimately you know, impact your decision if you're not super good at that sport. And so overall, um, sports did not play a big role in my application at all. It was literally just a line on my activities list. I never wrote an essay about it. Um, I think all it did was give me like more life experience, which I think was valuable, which is why I would do it again if I, you know, were to do it all over again. But I think personally, as someone who did not commit to sports fully, it was not a something that like really impacted or helped me get into college. The next question is one that I kind of had the same question when I went into high school, but knowing that letter of recommendations are really important, did you try to purposely foster good relationships with teachers and do you have any advice as to how to do that properly? Um, Honestly, I really didn't. I think there were a lot of teachers that did not like me because I wasn't really afraid to, you know, speak up when I thought there was something wrong in the class. There were times where teachers really did not like me. So I think I honestly tried to be authentic and create good connections with the teachers that I liked because when you're sort of like being a teacher's pet they can tell a lot of the time and a lot of your peers can also tell when you're trying too hard to like get a teacher to like you and other students will judge you for it um, but I think it's really important to just try and form genuine connections like if you genuinely like a teacher and you like talking to them then do it I think um, I did that a lot especially you know with the teacher I ended up asking for like my letter of rec for history I think I genuinely really enjoyed talking to her and I genuinely enjoyed her class so much. So I think it's really important to form very genuine connections because if they're not genuine, like 
people can tell. And I think it won't end up getting you the result you desire. So I would say you should keep in mind that you should be, you know, making good connections with teachers, but don't force them too hard Mm -hmm. would be my advice. Okay. So I know that we are a little bit ahead of time, about like 10 minutes early, but I'm going to just start wrapping things up. Now, first thing, Summer sent out the wrong link to the Discord earlier. So please refer to the new one. She just sent it. Um, Please use that one to actually access the correct link on Discord. Now, last thing, Katie, this one final question. If you were to describe in five key phrases the most important takeaways for getting into college or just being successful in high school, what would those five things be? So like five points, like five words. Five points. How about that? Keep them short. Okay, cool. Um, let me think. I actually wrote them down for my brother, so <laughs> I wanted to find that. But I remember writing down that I think throughout the whole thing, you had to have to be very self motivated because not every student is like that student who's gonna go go the extra mile like just on their own. I think it's a very important thing to know what kind of person you are and kind of find it within yourself to find a genuine reason that you want to go to a good college. Because if you just want to go to a good college, just to go to a good college, you're not going to find yourself daily, like motivated daily to kind of do your work and do everything you want to do. So I think at the core of it, the most important thing is to like figure out what motivates you as a student or figure out what motivates your student if you're a parent and make sure to hone in on that in order to get the best results out of it. And honestly, college applications is such a gamble. Like a lot of my friends were super disappointed by their results. A lot of people were, you know, done wrong by the college admissions process. And with the new court case, we honestly have no idea what's going to happen. We don't know how college admissions will change. So I think by the end of it, the most important thing that my parents even told me was that you need to be happy with what you did in high school, no matter what result that you get. And I think the more genuine you get with it, the more easily it will be to achieve and the more easily it will be to be satisfied with your results once the story is all over because whatever college you get into is you know where you're going to be for the next four years and you have to be more you have to be satisfied with the previous four years of high school um, even when you're going into college and so I think having you know having fun with the things that you do is super important so you're not like miserable the entire time and it'll just help you overall in creating a genuine application that comes off as genuine and likable in the end i'd say number 2 is um i think as, as going on that note of being likable i think that's a huge part of the admissions process because a lot of students will apply and not have you know a good story or a good um you know, thing that makes them like likable as an applicant. I think I used a lot of humor in my end application. Like in my essays, I wasn't afraid to make jokes. I wasn't afraid to be informal. I wasn't afraid to tell a story that might be like, you know, a little surprising. So I think like embracing like humor and being a little casual and like showing your personality on the paper is like a super important part of applying to college. Same thing with summer applications. I think summer applications, it's even easier to stand out because people aren't giving their all into summer applications. So I think, you know, no matter what application you're doing, you want to be like putting your personality, you know, up front and you want to be like showcasing and marketing yourself in a way that is super likable that's probably like the number one thing you can do because no matter like how hard you work you could be putting hours and hours into something but if you kind of just like submit it in a very boring or bare bones way it's not going to have the amount of impact that someone who markets like you know something they spent less time on but they present it in a very fun and unique way like it's not going to you know be able to compete with that so I think a lot is you know making sure that you're conveying yourself in a very positive light um, that is very likable to you know whoever's reading your application and I think overall that makes the process a lot more fun I had so much fun writing my you know funny essays I think that was very enjoyable for me and I think made the process all the much like more better um I'm trying to think of like three four five but um I think I went through a lot of what (laughs) I wanted to say throughout this uh I think I don't know. Do you have any other specific questions for me? I think those were my main two things I wanted to say. No, um, I think just like maybe like a few last words and then we can just wrap up this meeting. Of 
course. Um, I had a great time uh, talking to you guys today. I hope I wasn't drawing on too long about anything. Um, again, I'm really happy to answer any questions you might have for me. Please feel free to reach out. I mean, sh should I send my like contact information in the chat that work? Uh, sure, feel free to do that. Awesome, okay, I will do that. But I will say like um, from my personal experience, talking to someone who's older than me was super motivating for me. And so if anyone wants to chat with me, I'm more than happy to just chat or like meet up with you or you know chat for a few like 30 minutes like I'm super open to that so please contact me and then again if you're interested in like a longer session or anything long term I'm very happy to offer counseling services as well okay thank you Katie for joining everyone thank you for participating in this quick meeting uh we will have the recording uploaded onto YouTube and then later on to the breaking barriers on everywhere else that we can possibly submit this but Again, thank you everyone for the time and hope to see you again in the future. Bye. Thank you guys.